Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, testing, just give me a sec. Just give me a minute. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Um, okay, we've got that going on for us. Okay, I've just lost my okay there it is give me a sec guys i'm trying to figure out how to share the correct screen stop sharing share screen um okay got it this should be the correct screen in the meantime, okay, hi, Yunos. Hi, Sam. Oh, hey, Summit. How are you? Let's see you again. Let's see the rest of you who are here. Hi, Andres. Hi, An Ari, Ari N. Hi, Bando. Hi, Kelso. Hi, Saradon. Hi, Digby. Jonic. Chu. Leah. Marbert. Lamini, Navi, Nuku, Nadanuku. Okay, the this list is, is too long. I can't say hi to everyone, but hi everyone who's saying hi to me. Um, hi Yunus from Qatar. Can I just find out where you guys are from? Because I see so many of you here today. I've never seen a lot of your names before, so I'm not sure where you guys are from. Can you guys let me know from in the chat box? Uh Yep, so, hey, Sami, I think I've met you a few times already. Nice to see you here again. Hong Kong. Oh, nice. Philippines. South Africa, Philippines. Germany. Um, Australia. Tanzania. Okay, we've got the... It, this is an international crowd. I still see so many people joining. India, another Niraj from India. Maximilian. Hi, everyone. Another Filipino. Oh, I miss Philippines so much. I really wish I can go visit. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. So I am doing this webinar from Singapore. Okay. We're going to do, we're going to start a webinar. I do see the attendance list like slowing down. There's still a lot of you joining, but it's slowing down. Okay, so I'm going to start the webinar. So by the time I'm done with the introduction, hopefully everyone would have joined and settled in already. Okay, so let me see if everything is working fine. Can I just double check? You guys can obviously hear me because I asked you guys, La Soto. Oh, I'm not sure that. Okay, I asked you guys where you guys are from, and a lot of you are answering me. So I'm very sure you guys can hear me. I just want to check if you guys can see my screen. My screen should say the Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. Take mail 2023. Uh, yes, no, everyone can see. Okay, thank you, Digby. Thank you, Rai, thank you. Thank you, Muhammad. Oh, still a lot of you joining. Okay, it's working, screen is working. I'm gonna start now. Okay, so today we are going to do the Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. This is part of the entire series brought to you by uh, TickMail, obviously. That's why you're here today. This webinar was brought to you by TickMail so that you guys can grow and learn. You can learn trading and you can grow your trading because ultimately we want you guys to grow your trading account. We want you to be good in trading. The more people that are better in trading, the happier that we are. Okay, so disclaimer, disclaimer, any 
material provide, provided in this webinar should only be construed as informational purposes or educational purposes only. Do not take this as trading advice. This is not an this is don't take this as trading advice don't take this as financial advice don't take this as any kind of advice that re, that will require you to put, lose risk your money okay it only should be considered as educational the whole point of this webinar is to help you guys grow as traders um a risk warning trading especially on leverage okay trading on leverage carries significant risk so if you are new to trading please please i beg you guys do not do like i would say 80 percent or 90 percent of people who join trading they lose money because they don't know what they're doing and then they jump into trading they see win they win one time and they're like oh okay i can do this this is this is not that hard and then they end up losing a lot of money okay i am saying this because i am one of those people i joined trading i thought it was so easy that i ended up losing a lot it took me quite a while to win back all my losses but yes uh please learn from my mistake and learn from the other 90 percent of people who are not making money from trading learn first learn to swim before you jump into the ocean okay so for those who don't um already know me i am guessing a lot of you wouldn't know me because other than summit i do see summit around quite often okay but other than summit i don't think the rest of you would know who i am my name is cassandra you can call me Cass. okay i am an investment analyst and a prop trader at Everest Fortune Group. So Everest Fortune Group, we're an award-winning research firm. Okay, we, we won the best Forex and best equity research for 2019. No one, we're the finalists. Okay, 2019, 2020, and 2021. 2022 is not out yet. That's why it's not posted there. Okay, uh, so basically we do a lot of research, back testing. We kind of advise the banks and brokerages and uh, financial houses where we think the markets are going. Uh, we just spend a lot of time charting, basically, okay? Other than that, I, personally, I am a prop trader, I was saying. I am a prop trader, not just at Everest Watching Group. I am a prop trader at a few prop firms. For those who don't know what these prop firms do, so these prop firms, to become one of their traders, you need to first take a test. To pass their test, you need to take 8 to 10% within one month so one month has weekends weekends is closed so you only have 22 trading days in a month on average okay in the 22 trading days you need to make eight to ten percent profit okay eight to ten percent profit before you can pass the passing rate for these tests are about like i think it's one i think it's less than two percent so i am in that two percent because i've passed this test many many times already okay so i specialize in technical analysis if you have any questions regarding technical analysis therefore if you have any questions regarding technical analysis don't be shy please ask in the chat box i'll try my best to answer you if time permits okay sometimes the question the chat box just goes crazy and i cannot really answer all your questions but i'll try my best to answer because again this webinar is brought to you to help you improve in trading so if you're not asking questions i cannot really help you improve in the area that you are lacking so today's webinar will be momentum masterclass the uh, part two uh adx we're gonna learn a bit about adx correlations and heikan aishi okay for those who don't know what these are you will be learning today uh for those who do know do you trade the gap i'm looking at the xy i don't really trade um Okay, so DXY, uh, I don't really trade because it's an index, right? I don't really trade because I am I specialize in technical analysis. So index, I usually very, not usually, but a lot of times it's very influenced by fundamental analysis and therefore it will not work very well with my trading style. So therefore I don't really trade DXY that much. I'm more to other things that require less fundamental analysis like forex or i trade a lot of gold okay i am a gold specialist i would say because 80 percent 90 percent of my trades are on gold okay 
Can you guys let me know if you guys have ever heard of ABX and Heikan Aishi? So when I found out I was going to do this webinar for you guys, I actually went to backtest a lot of ABX and Heikan Aishi and I find that actually it is an indicator. These are indicators that I actually would use for myself, technical analysis. I find that it's not bad. I did see some results. I think when I was doing my back testing, out of 10 times, I tested it nine times. It worked out, but I just, I don't know if it's just the market conditions. You know, when you do back testing, your, your data, the collection of data before you conclude something needs to be very huge. So I only, I only did back testing for 10 trades. Uh, ideally, you want information on maybe 100 trades, 100 trades before you can get accurately to know how well something works. But on 10 trades, I find that ADX and Heikan Aishi do work quite well. Okay, so Summit has heard of it. No one else has responded. I'm guessing you guys have not heard of it. Using Heikan Aishi is still confused. Um, okay, we are going to go into it today. So our agenda for today is what is ADX? What is Heikan Aishi? What do you use? How do you use them together? You combine both then. How do you use them? Use correlation to filter good versus fake breakouts. Okay, so we're going to use Heikan Aishi to kind of find setups. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to find setups with Heikan Aishi and ADX. Look, if you're going into TradingView, there's going to be hundreds of different kinds of technical analysis. This is just one way of doing it, okay? So there's no one technical analysis that will last forever and that can be used forever. Although uh, Elliott Wave, for example, has been around for 100 years, but other than Elliott Wave, the rest, other indicators are fairly new and a lot, a lot of, um, we don't know how long it can last in the markets because markets conditions are constantly changing. Okay, so that's why we are constantly learning new things in case the thing that we are currently using, the strategy or technique that we are currently using suddenly stops working. We can then go and look for another strategy and another um, style of trading. Okay, so what exactly is ADX? ADX is, I know it says ADX, okay? Like the variation is ADX, but it's actually ADI as in average directional index. Okay, so that's the name of ADX. So don't be confused. Okay, so ADX or average directional index is a technical analysis indicator used in trading to measure the strength of a trend. Okay, so it's basically used to look for trend. I need to remind you guys, okay, I need to remind you guys that every time we are learning a new indicator or something new, I will always go through the history of it, but that is not the most important part. Like the most important part is knowing how to apply the indicator. So at the end of the webinar, towards the second part or the second half of the webinar, once we go through the history, once we kind of know the background, more importantly, I want you guys to be able to absorb how to use this indicator, okay? You just need to know how to use this indicator. Right now, I'm going through the history. It's good to know, but is it that important? Uh, it's like, it's good to know. It's good to know that my name is Cassandra, right? I did an introduction, my name is Cass. It's good to know that my name is Cass, but ultimately what's more important is that you take away you know what I'm trying to say and you know how to apply the indicators that I'm trying to teach you, okay? So a lot of this is just good to know information, okay? So it was developed by J. Wells Wilder in the late 1970s. So this indicators have been, this indicator, the ADX has been around for 53 years now and it's based on the premise that the strength of a trend can be determined by the degree of separation between positive and negative directional movement. So the ADX is a non-directional indicator, meaning it does not provide information about the direction of the trend, only the strength of the trend. Okay, so the indicator is typically displayed as line chart that ranges from zero to 100, the, with higher value indicating stronger trend, okay? 
So the only thing I want you guys to take away from whatever I said is that ADX doesn't tell you the direction of the trend. It doesn't tell you whether it's going up or it's going down. The only thing it tells you is the strength of the trend. So you kind of use this to look at how strong trend is, kind of like volume, okay? Like how, what, how strong the momentum is, okay? So ADX is not to be used to look for up or down, okay? I will show you guys later, second half, what is the magic number you want to look for when you're using ADX, okay? Um, also, another thing I want to remind you guys, uh, because these webinars, this webinars is brought to you by um, TickMail. So TickMail invited us to do these webinars for you. I'm only sharing uh, the strategy, the way that I use this indicator that I have found effective. So when I am doing back testing, I'm only sharing with you guys how to use this indicator effectively in my opinion, okay? So if you meet another trader who uses ADX in a different way or different style, it is, there's no right or wrong. It's just different ways of using an indicator. I'm only showing you guys how I did it when I did my back testing. Okay, so ADX is calculated by taking the difference between two directional indicators, the po positive directional indicator, which is the plus DI, and the negative directional indicator, which is minus DI, and dividing it by the sum of the two indicators. The resulting value is then smoothened using a moving average to create the ADX line. Okay, this is what the ADX line, um, ignore the green and the yellow. The ADX line is usually the red, okay? The reason why there's three lines here is because this is probably not the ADX, this is probably the D, uh, DMI, okay? This is probably a different indicator. This is a different indicator, which I will show you guys later on, okay? So the calculation for the ADX are as follows. Again, good to know, not necessarily. You don't need to remember this information. Calculate the directional movement by taking the difference between the current high and the previous high. Calculate the directional movement by taking the difference between the previous low and the current low and calculate the true range by taking the maximum of the following three values. So the first value is the current high minus the current low, absolute value of the current high minus the previous close, and absolute value of the current low minus the previous close. So calculate the positive directional indicator by dividing the current plus DM, value by the true range value and multiplying by 100, okay? Again, we're going to see a few calculations today. Do not attempt to memorize this. If you want, if you really want these calculations, you just Google it after this webinar, okay? So smooth the DX value using the moving average to create ADX line. Traders use ADX to identify strong trends and to filter weak and non-existing trends. A reading above 25 generally considered indicator as a strong trend while below suggests that the market is ranging or consolidating, especially if it is below 20. So I will show you guys later. Uh, it ranges from zero to 100. Every time you see that uh, ADX is above 25. So the magic number for this indicator is 25, okay? 25 is the magic number. When it is above 25, it means it's ranging. When it's below, especially if it's below 20, it means that price is going sideways, okay? Sorry, if it's above 25, it means it's trending, okay? It is trending. Okay, so traders may use the ADEX in combination with other technical analysis to confirm trading signals to help manage risk. So the other indicator that I will show you guys today, uh, that this hundreds of possibilities of how you can use ADX, okay? But today we're only going to combine ADX with the Heikan Aishi, which we will go through now, okay? And then I will show you guys how to combine with other things if we have time, but chances are we will have time because um, this is going to, it's not that, this is not a very long topic, okay? So this is what the Heikan Aishi looks like. 
Some of you may be confused. It looks like just a candlestick, right? So the Hagen Eshi is basically a candlestick. If you go to Trading View, go to the top left corner, you will see candlesticks and you can click the different kinds of candlesticks. So Hagen Eshi is one of them. The other one is a line chart, the bar chart, whatever other chart there is. Hagen Eshi is one of them. So Hagen Eshi candlesticks are an off shoot of Japanese candlesticks. Hagen Aishi candlesticks use the open close data from the prior period and the open high low close data from the current period to create a combo candlesticks. The resulting candlesticks filter out, filters out some noise in an effort to better capture trend. So you can see the Two technical analysis that we want to use today, Hagen Aishi and both the ADX is very heavy on trend. Okay, so if you guys, um, let me see. Other than Summit, I think the rest of you have probably never joined my webinars before. If you guys join my webinars, you know how particular I am with trend because I believe that if you can find trend, you can answer this question, is price going up or is price going down? If you can successfully answer this question, you would have won half the battle. Half your analysis would have been correct already. Why? If price is trending upwards, you look for a buy. If price is trending downwards, you look for a sell. We always want to follow trend. We do not want to go against the wave. Therefore, these two indicators is perfect, okay, in answering that question. Is price going up or is price going down, okay? Um, yes, I do have a checklist of what I follow. The first thing I look for is trend. After trend, then I look for support and resistance. After support and resistance, then I combine Fibonacci and indicators. Okay, so first things first, always look for trend first, in my opinion, because if you don't look for trend, then it's very hard for you to know if price is going up or down. Okay, so in Japanese, the Haikan means average and Aishi means pace. So taken together, Haikan Aishi represents the average pace of price. Haikan Aishi candlesticks are not used like normal candlesticks. Dozens of bullish and bearish reversal patterns consisting of one to three candlesticks are not to be found. Instead, these candlesticks can be used to identify trending periods, potential reversal points, and classic technical analysis pattern. So this is what the Heika actually looks like. It looks exactly like your Japanese candlesticks, okay, where this is the high, this is the close, this is the open, I mean, depending on the color of your candlesticks as well. And this is your low, okay? For those who don't already know uh, candlesticks, this is the most basic, basic topic you need to learn in technical analysis. Learn candlesticks first, then everything else. Okay, so again, this is your high, low, close, open. This is your lower shadow. Okay, this is a, it's just a very basic, it's basically the same as your Japanese candlesticks. Okay, the difference between the Japanese candlesticks and the Heikan Aishi is, here's the calculation. Okay, the open, the open, is half of the previous bar open price plus previous bar close price. That means, that means let's go back to the candlestick. You take, if you want to know where the open is for this, you take the close for here and the open, sorry, the previous high from the candlesticks before it and the previous low from the candlesticks before it, and you divide it by two. So if you divide that by two, usually you get in the middle. So if you notice, if you pay attention, Heikan Aishi always starts in the middle of the previous candlesticks. It always starts somewhere in the middle of the previous candlesticks. Why? Because you're taking the high and the low and you're dividing it by two and that's the open for your next candlestick. Okay, that's the calculation. The close is the current bar, open plus close plus high plus low, and then you get a quarter of that, and then you will get the closing price. The high is the maximum, the highest of all these values, 
open, close, and high. That's the same as your Japanese candlesticks and the low is the lowest of any of these values, open, close, and low. So it's the same as the Japanese candlesticks as well. Okay, anyone confused? Anyone need me to repeat anything before I move on? Just wanna see if you guys are still following. Everyone good? Uh, thank you, Sham. Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you, Eunice. Okay, please go on. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so this is what the Heikan Aishu would look like with the Japanese candlesticks. This is the Japanese candlesticks. You can see the start is always in the middle of the previous candlestick. It looks quite similar, but there are different different things okay so let me this is the time you need to pay attention okay remember just now i said that if i'm talking about the history of an indicator you don't we are together thank you maximilian thank you digby okay you don't have to pay so much attention if oh i forgot that we are using zoom today okay so with zoom i don't think i have a pen option wait let me let me um let me see if there's a pen. Okay, I think this is a pen. Pen. Is this a pen? Okay, yes, there is a pen here. Okay, so uh, this is the important part. This has nothing to do with the history, okay? This is literally understanding the indicator. So this part, we, we all need to follow as much as we can. Okay, so as you can see with the Heikan Aishi, this is a doji here, but you can see the Japanese candlesticks, it looks like a normal, just a fat, like a, a full body candlestick, okay? This is the same charts, by the way. This is the same charts, but it's just different. So your Heikan Aishu will sometimes come in dojis, okay? Or it'll come in spinning tops, okay? Spinning tops or bottom, spinning tops. This is a spinning top or a spinning bottom, okay? Uh, a lot of doji, a lot of dojis, a lot of dojis. Every time you see a doji, okay, or a spinning top, this is a spinning top, this is a spinning bottom, this is a spinning bottom. Every time you see doji or spinning top, spinning bottom on Heikan Aishi, it means that the chart that you are looking at, the trend has stopped and now it is deciding whether it wants to go up, okay? So this is your decision, indecision candle. So doji and spinning top, spinning bottom is your indecision candle. You can see there's a lot of spinning top and a lot of doji here. That's why it's still deciding, deciding whether it wants to go up or go down. It kind of looks like it's just going sideways, okay? Where is the eraser? Okay, cool. Okay, so if that is how you look for um, indecision, dojis and spinning toss window are indecision, how do you look for trend, okay? You see this green candle? If the candle is green, means it's a bullish candle, and you see that the candle wicks, you see the wicks is wicking upwards, Okay, it's totally different from your candlesticks, your Japanese candlesticks. Your Japanese candlesticks, if it's wicking downwards, means that it is this rejection and there is upwards momentum or bullish momentum. Okay, for Heikan Aishi, it's kind of the other way around. If the candle is green and the wick is pointing up, it means price is trending upwards. If the candle is red, okay, the candle is red, and you see wicks at the bottom, it means, okay, this is a red candle. I mean, it also depends on your trading view settings, right? But the default setting is that green is bullish and red is bearish, okay? I, I do know people who change their candlesticks to black and purple because that's their favorite color or whatever it is, okay? But basically your wick, placement is important and the color of your candle is important okay if anything until up till now you did not absorb this is the only thing that is important that you need to absorb 
with the Heikan Aishi, Doji, and spinning top, spinning bottle means indecision, okay? Price doesn't know if it's going up or it's going down, okay? Heikan Aishi can tell you where it is trending, whether it's trending up or down, okay? If you see a red candle, just like this one, and the wick is pointing down, this is a sign that price is going down. I've uh, got a question here. Hold on, give me a minute. Some, I think someone typed in the Q&A box. I'm clicking on the Q&A box and nothing is coming up. Oh, okay, there you go. Does this work for Forex indices, commodities, everything, or just Forex? Okay, good question, Leah. Uh, it actually works for, for Hagen Aishu, right? You're asking for Hagen Aishu. Hagen Aishu works on all pairs. It all works on all instruments. Why? Because it's kind of like your Japanese candlesticks. Your Japanese candlestick will work on all instruments as well, right? Actually, most technical analysis works on all instruments. It's just that whether that chart you are looking at or that instrument you are looking at is very uh, influenced by fundamental analysis, for example. So indices is very influenced by fundamental analysis, okay? So you can do all the technical analysis you want on indices, like index, and then suddenly today news comes out, news comes out, your technical analysis is wrong, okay? Because it's very influenced by news and whatnot. If M says M solved the puzzle of Forex, metal trading, then what is the future of um hi morning morning the hero from uh, nigeria welcome to our webinar okay so everyone is okay with heikan aishu right everyone got the like the basic rules of heikan aishu right because i'm gonna move on now if you don't understand heikan aishu even if i move on you're gonna be so lost Richard is saying, hey, Gan Doji shows retracement, not indecision. The trend in the chart shows remains long. Okay. Um, yes, in somewhat, it can be retracement as well, but more like there is a possibility of trend reversal. Okay. So anytime you see Doji or spinning top, it just kind of means that price has the trend for the current price is not as strong as it used to be. So here we can see very nice green candles with wicks pointing upwards, okay? This is very nice, it's pointing up. And then you suddenly see a doji behind it, okay? When you see a doji behind this, it, the doji's way or Heikan Aishi's way of telling you, hey, there is a possibility that the trend has ended. You might wanna consider getting out, okay? Uh, but yes, it can also mean retracement, but it can also mean indecision. Okay, do you technique multiple time frames intraday trading? Yes, I do use uh, this technique on my intraday trading. Hi, Sean, better to set Hagan on charts. I see more on phone. Okay, okay so. You're struggling to, um, okay, I see some of you still having issues with the, the Heikan Aishi. Uh, don't worry about it because after this, the rest of the webinar will be, the rest of the slides will be quite fast. Okay, you just need to remember. If you are pulling out Heikan Aishi on the charts, you just need to remember Doji, okay, Doji, and spinning top or spinning bottom, it is a sign that trend may have ended, okay? When I see green, 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 wicks pointing up, it is telling me that price is going up. Then suddenly I see a red and then the, the wick is pointing down. This is Haken's Aishri's way of telling me, hey, this uptrend may have ended. I may be going down for a retracement or a pullback, okay? Maybe not confirmed. 
okay maybe it is just a suggestion nothing in trading nothing in trading or nothing in technical analysis is 100 percent that's why i say it is a indecision or a possible change of trend or like um richard is saying a possible retracement how do you use this on multi time frame? Okay, we're gonna have to quickly move on from here so that we can go on to trading view and I can show you. Does Heka actually have the time lag against the regular cancer? It doesn't have a time lag, it's moving uh, with such the same as the regular candlestick. Okay, so I'm gonna move on from here so we don't spend too much time from here. Uh, do you have re recordings for this? Where can I see for a review? Okay, um, this video is definitely recorded because when I started playing this webinar, it says uh, recording in progress. So it's definitely recorded. You need to email Tickmail, get in touch with Tickmail to get the recording. Okay, they will post it somewhere. I'm not sure if it's on YouTube or they just post it on their own website. Okay, but you need to get in touch with them so that you can find out. Okay, sorry, I don't really know um, this back end stuff because Tickmail, only, Tickmail invites us to do this webinars for you guys. So I don't really know after the webinar where do all the, web, the recordings go to. Okay, so how do you use them together? I'm going to show you guys how to combine both Hagen Aishi and the ADX together. Okay, so this is the ADX indicator, you go to trading view. I literally just did this. I did this today right before the webinar because I want the analysis to be as accurate as possible. Okay, I, I want it to be as accurate as possible. So, um, does this work? No, I need to erase. Okay, cool. Okay, so I just did this. This was today, maybe an hour or half an hour before our webinar. I was looking at the charts to find you guys very good examples. Okay, so I go to a trading view. The first thing I want to do is change my, my candlesticks to Heikan Aishi. Okay, this is what a Heikan Aishi candlesticks look like. You know it is a Heikan Aishi because the candlestick will always start in the middle. Not always, but like somewhere in the middle of the last candlesticks. And then I pull out my ADX because of the purpose for the purpose of today's webinar, we are going to combine Hagan Aishi and ADX together to find a good setup. So I will show you guys how to find a setup using both of these indicators. Okay, so remember when candlestick is red and the wick is pointing down, that is a sign of trending down. Okay, when candlestick is green, the wick is pointing up, that's a sign of trending up okay so i'm going to show you where exactly i would have gotten in for this exact same trade for ethereum for yesterday for today actually i am in this trade okay i am in this trade for a buy my entry was here okay i didn't use hekan aishi i didn't use um, adx i used another uh, style of trading but yes this is my entry um yes i am in very good profits right now but that's not the point the point is how do we use this to get into trade Okay, so let me erase everything. Okay, first things first. Remember in the beginning of the webinar, I said the magic number for ABX is 25. So the first thing I want to do is highlight 25. Okay, so I will go and highlight uh, 25 on the ABX so that I know whenever price is on the ABX, okay, whenever price is above the ABX, 25. Okay, it means that there is a strong trend. And I said below 25, especially if it's below 20, means that the trend is strong. Remember in the beginning of the webinar, I said ADX cannot tell you whether price is going up or down. It can only tell you the strength of trend. So you are going to have to use other things to identify bullishness or bearishness but ADX will tell you whether that bullish, bullish momentum or the bearish momentum is strong or not. Okay, so in this case, we can see in this exact area here, price just crossed over the 25. What does that tell me as a trader? If price crosses here at the 25, it tells me that, okay, in this area, this area here, there is going to be strong momentum. Okay, I don't, Sorry, I didn't, I couldn't draw a straight line. OK, 
okay? Um, there's going to be a strong momentum, whether it's up or down, that's why you need to pick up, okay? At the same time, when we're looking at the Heikan Aishi, you can see a lot of doji, you can see a lot of spinning top, a lot of spinning bottom. What does this tell me? When this happens, okay, when I see a lot of doji, a lot of spinning top, a lot of spinning bottom, based on what I told you earlier on, price is indecision. It's doing an indecision, okay? It is deciding whether it wants to go up or it wants to go down, okay? It is deciding whether it wants to go up or it wants to go down because right now it is still trending, okay? Usually when there is a doji or when there is a lot of uh, spinning top, spin bottom, it is a sign of price. It usually price ranging when you see a lot of that, okay? So number one, you know what the information we have collected is that there will be a strong trend because price just passed 25. You just now need to know whether it is up or down. Okay, so using technical analysis, using uh, support resistance, you would have highlighted this area anyways, right? You would have seen this. I was really hearing that at 20 or below on ADX 14. Uh, Okay, so the setting, I think you're asking if this is settings. The settings for ADX 14, uh, this one is just default. I didn't change anything when I was on trading view. So when I'm trading view, I look for ADX and this is the setting that came out. Okay, um, but the magic number is 25. 20, 25 below 20 means that it's not ranging. Okay, so using support resistance, I know that this is a key level. That means either in this level that I have highlighted, this is support or resistance, okay? This is support resistance. This is actually this is your resistance, okay? If price were to break this area, I know it's going to go up. If it reverses from here, I know it's going to go down, okay? Using ADX, I know that this area will have trend. I just don't know whether it's going up or down. So as a trader, what do I do? Okay, I wait for the breakout. Okay, so how you use this? You identify your resistance. Okay, you identify your resistance. You've identified your resistance. This is your key level, okay? When it breaks up, you enter here for buy, okay? And you know that buy will push your price to the take profit area. Why? Because price is above the 25 and therefore the based on the theory of ABX, the range, the trend is strong, okay? So usually... Uh, me personally, I would have missed this trade. If I used that style of trading, I would have missed this trade. Why? Because my style of trading, usually after a breakout, I wait for the retest and I only get in at the retest. Okay, that is my style of trading. There are traders who, when they see the breakout, they immediately enter at the breakout. Uh, my style of trading is that if it breaks out, wait for the retest. At the retest, I see reversal pattern, candlesticks or some kind of confirmation then only I enter for the buy, okay? So I would have missed this uh, trade, but this is a very good example of how you can use ADX and Heikan Aishi to look for a setup and a trade, okay? Everyone can follow, everyone good? Like, is there any question you guys want to ask me? I'll try my best to answer to the best of my ability. Okay, um... Good, still following. Please move on. Perfect. Good. Thanks. All clear. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Everyone's clear. Everyone can understand how to use, how to apply ADX and um, ADX and Hega actually on charts. Okay. Good. Cool. So I'm gonna move on. How do you use correlation to filter good versus fake breakout? Okay. So we're gonna use, we're gonna try to avoid fake outs and we're gonna try to avoid 
getting into fit tricks. Okay, so remember just now, okay, we were using the ABX. Right now, I have discovered, okay, when I was back testing and I was doing a lot of research on ADX, I realized the other thing indicator that you can use is called a DMI, okay? So this DMI consists of three lines. The red line is the ADX, okay? Um, and the blue line is, I, I think the blue line is a D plus D plus DI, if I'm not mistaken, okay? And then the yellow line is the plus minus D1, okay? Uh, I can't really remember the terms of this, okay? But more importantly, I'm gonna teach you how to use it. Okay, so how I personally remember stuff is by colors. I, I use um, Ichimoku Cloud on a daily basis. Until today, I sometimes forget the name of the lines, but I identify by colors. So of ADX and Nega and she can go in a gold trip. Um, let me finish this slides and then we can move on to trading view. I only have two more slides, then we can move on to trading view and then can try to find. Okay, so how to avoid fake out this exact same chart as just now, okay? The same chart I took from Ethereum today. Okay, so how do you avoid breakout? Here I know I'm gonna either enter for a buy or sell. Okay, here I know that the 25% mark is here. If price is above the 25%, it means that price is ranging, right? Okay, uh, sorry, trend is strong. Okay, it means that trend is strong. Okay, so the red is the ADX indicator. This is a combination of ADX and two other lines. Okay, so this ADX, if it's above 25, that will satisfy my first requirement. My first requirement is that ADX needs to be above 25. Okay, so I satisfy my, sec my first requirement. My second requirement, okay, this is where it gets good. How do I know if price is going up or down? You see this blue line and this yellow line, okay? Uh, it's kind of like a moving average. I don't know if you guys have ever used, used the golden cross and the get dead cross. It's the exact same concept as the golden and the dead cross. Okay, it's a different kind of indicator. When this blue line is above this yellow line, it means that price is going up. When this blue line is below this yellow line, it means that price is going down. Okay, that's it. This is as simple as I can get this indicator to work. Like I, like when I was trying to understand it, this I was thinking, how do I make this as simple as possible? You do not want to confuse yourself in trading. You want to understand the indicator as simply as possible. You, you can understand the whole thing. You want to know the entire history of something. It's totally up to you, okay? But you need to know it as simply as possible and to apply it and use it as simply as possible. In this case, the blue is above the yellow. And on top of that, the blue is above the yellow. Okay, I don't know what the name of these lines are. I can't remember right now. Okay, but I just know blue above yellow is bullish. Blue below yellow is bearish. Okay, later when we go into trading view, we're going to get the names. Okay, I, I very bad with terms. Okay, but it has never stopped me from being very prof profitable from trading. Okay, again, I have passed a lot of crop trading tests multiple, multiple times, and I don't remember any of these names. Okay, so more importantly, you just need to remember what the colors mean and what the, and how to use indicators. Okay, so the blue is currently above the yellow, indicating that it's a buy. Okay, it's indicating that it's a bullish trend, and trend and ADX, this red line is above the 25, indicating that trend is strong. So we know that there's bullish momentum and we know that the bullish momentum is strong. Therefore, look at the chart. You can see how strong the bullish momentum is. So if you, um, yeah, thank you, Richard. It is plus DI and minus DI. You're right, it is called plus DI. This is plus DI and this is minus DI. Okay, so uh, most importantly, you remember the colors. Okay, um, 
you can see how strong this is. If you have gotten in here, you would have caught a very, very nice trade. I personally would have got, would not have gotten in because my trial, my style of trading is that after a breakout, it needs to pull back. After the pullback only, then I enter. Okay, because I like to see pullbacks and I like to only get in at pullbacks because that is my way of waiting for another form of in, uh, confirmation. Okay, so that is basically how you use um, ADX and Heikan Aishi together. Okay, combining other forms of technical analysis. Now we're going to go into the charts. We still have 10 minutes left. Okay, we still have 10 minutes left. We can probably find some setups or we can probably use this as a very good time to practice how to use the ADX and ADX. ADX and um, Hegana Ishi. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to go um, into trading view. Uh, discard. Oh, where is my. Just give me a sec, guys. I need to share a screen. Okay, just quickly confirm that you can see my trading view screen. Perfect. Can we look at GMP USD? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, before the webinar, I didn't test on XAO USD and GBP USD because these are the two requests you guys are asking for. So I don't know how well it's going to work. Okay, but let's just look at it anyways. Let's just look at this anyways. Okay, so XAO USD. Let's use XAO USD. Sorry, my WhatsApp, it's on. I'm going to turn that off. Okay. XAU USD. I am a gold trader. 90% of my trades are in gold. Okay. 90% of my trades are in gold. Uh, yep. I called for a buy. Called for a buy. It's nicely going to my take profit area. I'm going to get rid of this. I think I called for this a few days ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, no, I probably called this last week. Okay, yeah, I probably called this last week. Okay, so for the purpose of today's webinar, we are not going to focus on looking for setups, okay, guys? Because today's webinar is not a live analysis session. Today's webinar is to learn Heikan Aishi and ADX. Okay, so let's focus on learning Hekan Aishin ADX. Okay, so you see this candlestick here? This here, you're going to first change it to Hekan Aishi. Okay, you're going to first change it to Hekan Aishi. That was your normal candlestick. You have your bar chart, your candlestick, your hollow line chart, blah, blah, blah. If you want to learn any of this, this is a topic for a different day. Today, we are only going to focus on Hikan Aichi. Okay, number two. Okay, ADX. You type ADX, it will come out the average directional indicator. But remember, we don't... Uh, I feel like ADX will tell you the strength of trend, but ultimately, we also want to know whether it's going up or down. So we're going to pull out that other indicator, BMI, right? Directional Movement Index, okay? The Directional Movement Index also includes the ADX. Oh, I, I clicked it twice. I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, so you can see the red is the ADX and um, like Richard was saying, this is called the plus DI and the other one is called the minus DI. Ultimately, just remember the colors. I'm gonna get rid of this because not, it's, it's just, it's, we want to keep our charts as clean as possible. Okay, so how do I usually look for setups? I start from the daily. This is my normal, okay? Every day when I look for setups, this is literally how I would chart, okay? I don't chart it any different way. I only share things that I do, I personally do in real life with you guys in this webinar. I, like, I can't share with you something that I don't know, okay? So this is exactly how I would chart. Um... Sorry, my usual shutting way doesn't include ADX and DMI, okay? But based on back testing, this is how I would chart. Okay, let's say we start from the daily. 
Okay, the first thing I want to do, pull out my horizontal line. Okay, I want to identify where 25 is because remember the magic number for ADX is 25. Coordinates 25. If this red line is above 25, it means that trend is strong. Okay, if it's below 25, especially if it's below 20, it means that trend is weak. Okay, that's first thing. The second thing we want to identify is when, okay, we see here that price went below the 25. Why is this blue? Okay, we see that when price went below the 25, it came back up and broke above the 25 again. This is your key level, okay? This is the level of importance. When price have just broken the 25 area, that is where you want to, you want to look for an entry for uh, either a buyer or sell, okay? So because the red line have just broken the 25, you are now going to look at the blue and the yellow, which is the plus BI and the minus BI, and see where the blue line is. If the blue line is above the yellow, it is a buy or sell. Can you guys let me know in the chat box so I know you guys are still following. If the blue line is above the yellow line, is it a buy or a sell? Okay, thank you. Everyone is still following. Bye, 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 bye. Okay, everyone answered bye. Everyone is still following, okay? So we know in this area here where the red line just crossed the 25, indicating that trend is strong, and the blue is above the yellow, we know in this area is the area that we want to look for a buy entry. So I'm going to get a vertical line, okay? This is where you want to enter or look for a buy entry, okay? This exact area here. No, this blue is so striking. How do I get, how do I lessen the blue? Okay, wait, sorry guys. Uh, how do I make it dotted? Okay, it's a dotted. Okay, so this area, we know we want to get it. So now, this is exactly how I use the ABX and the Aiken Aishi, okay? So now, I'm going to look at the Aiken Aishi and see what information this area is giving me. When I look at the one, let me zoom in. Okay, when I look at the one, two, three, four candlesticks before it, it is green and the wick is pointing up, indicating to me that there is bullish momentum. But then suddenly, a uh, spinning top appears, showing me that mm, the bullish momentum may have stopped or have weakened or is doing a retracement or whatever it is. Basically, the bullish momentum, it is not very strong anymore, okay, compared to when it happens, okay, but based on the earlier candlesticks, I know that I want to be, I'm a bit more biased, okay, look, in trading, right, there's never 100%, I, until today, I don't know anyone who is 100% in trading, if you know that person, let me know, I want to, I want to meet him, I want to interview him, I want to know everything that he knows, okay, but until today, for sure, 100%, there's no 100% in trading. The only thing that I'm very sure about trading is that there is no 100%, okay? So because there is no 100%, your job as a trader is only to look for bias, okay? So bias meaning that you're going to look at the chart, collect whatever information and data, and then from the information and data that you've collected, decide whether it's going up or down, okay? So information I've collected so far is that the blue is above the red, giving me confidence that price is going up, okay? Another thing is that the four candlesticks before this spinning top was going up, indicating that it's go giving me even more confidence that it's going up. Price might go down, but I'm only making my decision based on what the chart is telling me. I'm not making my decision because I woke up this morning. Oh, I feel like XAUUSD is going down. I feel like, oh, my neighbor told me XAUUSD is going down. 
I saw TV and uh, something indicated that, okay, there's nothing in trading. Everything in trading is logical. Okay, so based on the information, this is, I'm biased. When I look at this, I immediately, I'm 60% that price is going up. I look at this, I'm maybe 70% now that price is going up. Okay, the more I see that there's so many green candles and wicks are pointing up, it gives me even more confidence to get in. Okay, so now what am I going to do? I'm going to use the replay button because we're going to pretend this has not happened yet. Okay, we're going to pretend this not, has not happened yet. Hey, why is this replay button not working out? Uh, it's over 6.30 already. For those who want to leave, you can leave. Anyways, we already covered the basics of Hikan Aishi and um, ADX. Now I'm just kind of showing how to really apply and how to use it. Okay, so I'm going to combine support resistance. Okay, this is your resistance area. Uh, this replay button is not working. By right, if I play, press this replay button and I go back here, it's supposed to like get rid of all these candlesticks here, okay? We're going to pretend it hasn't happened. We only just saw this happening, okay? Um, you're going to highlight your support resistance. So right now, because a lot of things are indicating to us that it's a buy, you can even now combine other things. I like to use Ichimoku. Ichimoku is a is a indicator that shows trend, okay? Let's say I combine even more indicators. Let's see what Ichimoku says. Hopefully it says up. Mm, okay, Ichimoku is saying up because the blue line has crossed the red line, okay? I can't remember the name of this. I think it's called the conversion line. The conversion line crossing the baseline is a sign of price going up, okay? Blue below red means that it's going down. In this case, in this exact area, we can see the blue have just crossed the red, which is another indication of a buy. Okay, so we've already combined a few things and a lot of things indicating to us that it's going to be a breakout rather than a reversal. So what are we going to do? As a trader, I'm going to wait for price to break out here and then I enter here for a buy. Okay, I enter here for a buy. I get into here for a buy, 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 buy. Where is your take profit area? Okay, your take profit area based on my strategy, okay, based on my trading style is to put your take profit area at the next swing high or swing low, at the next key level. Okay, so if I get in here, my take profit area would have been here. I would have TP here. This would have been my TP here. But you can see from the charts, if I had take profit here, I would have missed all of this profit, honestly, for me, I'm not greedy. I'm totally happy. If any time I make money, I'm happy, okay? So I'm not very greedy, okay? So, but the other way to look for your take profit is by using, we're going to go back to the one hour, okay? The other way to look for your take profit is by using the ADX, okay? So the ADX is still way above the 25, meaning that trend is still very strong, meaning that gold is still going to go up, okay? Based on the ADX. The other way you take profit is that you wait the minute that ADX comes back to 25, it is indicating to you that trend has ended or stopped or has become weak and that's where you should take profit, okay? So that's the other way. Me personally, I, I always take profit at the next support and resistance. There's a swing high here. This, uh, this is good enough for me. I would have put, put my stop loss here. Okay. If I were to get into this trade, I would have put my stop loss here or here. Usually, I take this, the type of stop loss. My risk to reward okay, would have been, looks like a very good risk to reward, honestly. This looks like a very, very good trade. Okay, one to 3.3, meaning if I have a $100,000 account or 100 million or whatever it is, account you have, if I have a $100,000 account, I'm risking 1%, which is this red area here. I always risk 1%. I never risk one more than 1%. Whenever I risk more than 1%, I'm either like drunk or something. I'm probably not thinking logically, but my rules are that I only risk 1%. And then my take profit is 3.31. If I win this trade, in this case, looking at this, if we were to follow this, we would have gotten in a very nice trade. I would have made 3.3% 3 
If I lose, I would have lost 1%. So that's a very good risk to reward trade. Although I didn't catch the entire wave up, I caught 3.3%, which honestly is so good for me. I don't know about you guys, but 3.3% in a single trade is a very good day. Okay, so this is how exactly I would use ADX and Hagen and Shing together if I were to find. Okay, in this case, using the ADX and the Hagen Aishi, I wouldn't be able to find you an entry because the entry point, if I were to use ADX, again, different traders will have different style. Maybe another trader can teach you how to get in right now. I definitely wouldn't be able to find you an entry right now. My entry points will be every time price crosses, every time price crosses the 25 mark, that is when I look for an entry. Okay, every time price crosses my 25 mark, that is when I look for an entry. If it doesn't cross, like right now it's at, it is at 69, I don't even consider. I'm just gonna move on. Okay, don't force it. There's no point forcing. There's no point taking 100 trades and then you don't win. Okay, so this is how I would use ADX and again, Aishi, um, that's all I have time for you guys today. I will catch you guys again. I'm gonna be taking you guys the next few months until I give birth. Uh, I'll be away in, let me see. I'm due to give birth in July, or oh, sorry, June. So I'll be taking you guys for three more months. Uh, the next time I take you guys, let me check my schedule. Tick mill, tick mill. Mm, the next time I take you guys will be on the 20th of March, 20th of March, um, 20th of March will be a live analysis session. So we will be going to the charts. We won't be learning any new indicator. We won't be learning anything, um, whatever it is. We are just looking for analysis and looking for setups, okay? So earlier on, you saw that my goal, I called for a buy. That was actually from one of my webinars last Friday. Um, I'm glad that it hit my take profit. I told you guys I was in Ethereum. That was from my one of my webinars. This uh, one of my analysis from this morning. Okay, I was calling for a buy, and uh, it's working out very well. Okay, it's working out very well. I can call it from last week. I actually saw it from Saturday, but because Saturday and Sunday the market is not open, so I only got into the trade um, this morning. Okay, so I hope to see you guys again. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks for the congratulations. How to use ADX in a ranging strategy? Um, hey, Richard, I wouldn't know how to use ADX in a ranging strategy because honestly, whenever I do this webinar for you guys, I only share the strategy that I know. So the strategy that I know is only when it is trending. So uh, ADX, I, I heard or I read that you can use use it for ranging. I personally do not how to do not know how to use it and I personally have not back tested it. So I wouldn't want to share information with you unless I'm 100% confident that I know how to use it. What time frame do I use? I use the four hours or the one hour to place my orders. Okay, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I'll catch you guys on the 20th where we do a live analysis session that on the 20th, I will show you guys how I use my own strategy to look for trades, okay? Again, there's hundreds of different ways to trade. There's hundred strategies. There's hundred indicators. Just go into indicators, go into technical indicators. Look at the amount of technical analysis here. Look at the amount of indicators. There's hundred ways to trade. Whenever we're doing these webinars, I'm only showing you guys how I trade and how I would use it. Okay, so bye everyone. Thanks for joining. I will catch you guys on the 20th. Bye.